Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I will be taking you through how to get a Silent Assassin rating on all three levels of the Gauchito Antiquity Deluxe Escalation for Hitman 3. This is the Deluxe Escalation for Mendoza and as you've seen uh, right away at the start we want to hop down the cliff face so that we can take out this guy to get the Gauchito Disguise which is uh, pretty much essential for this first stage. So obviously once you have the disguise and you've uh, secreted the body um, in the bushes there, we can head straight back up and go to the left hand vineyard field. So uh, not left hand, I suppose they're kind of far, far end vineyard fields. I don't know what the technical name for this area is. But anyway, um, you can stroll right past those guards there. And head to the kind of uh, water tanks, big tank processing plant at the back of this area. And uh, it's fairly easy to avoid the enforcers in this area, so you don't need to you don't need to worry or particularly closely follow the route that I happen to do. Um, but equally, the the route that I do should work for you if you want to want to copy it exactly. Do just, yeah, just be mindful of, of the fact there are enforcers around, so you do need to kind of think about where you're going at any given point. Anyway, grab the syringe that's on the table just behind the two guard, and from here you need to get to the mansion, the, the property at the rear of the vineyard field. So I will fast forward our route there. And so we need to make our way into the mansion. So the way I thought best to do this is to head along these, um, these, I don't know what you call them, ledges that you can strafe along. And you'll see me just picking up anything that I think I might be able to use to knock out guards. And then you're into the gardens at the back of the vineyard. So, uh, yeah, you can see me nearly getting spotted by a load of enforcers there. Um, I think, well, I say enforcers, it's not really enforcing here. I think you're, you're, you're trespassing, so this, this disguise is no good for this location. But that's fine, because we will soon have ourselves an outfit that will allow us to pass in this area. Um, and unfortunately for this guy, he is going to be the one who provides us with it. So yeah, that was a pretty risky takedown, but worked. And now we have a disguise that we can use in this area. Grab the gun to complete the disguise, why not? Next on our list, our to-do list, we need to obtain the Emetic Grenade, another of the uh, deluxe items for this escalation, one of the things that you unlock by completing it. It's just on this table here, so this is the main reason why you do probably need to avail yourself of a disguise that won't get you spotted by all these people. Now we have the Grenade, which is the second of the two items that you need to pick up to become the Guru. So now all that we need is the actual guru disguise. I will get right to work on my closing statement. Thank you, my love. I truly would be lost without you. This is me just checking where where on earth I need to go to get the guru disguise. The answer being, of course, that you need to head into the mansion, villa, property, residence. Um, Don Archibald Yates is accommodation let's put it that way so once you're into the mansion itself you want to head upstairs there's virtually no one around so you don't need to be too careful I think from this point you're basically free and clear you could see me also not knowing about the uh, the, the loft uh, pull rope here but anyway, now you've reached the attic and we can acquire the Guru outfit, which is what we came here for. 
and then we'll need to think about how best to take out our target who is patrolling the grounds of the mansion. I don't know if this qualifies as a mansion really. The, the property, the vineyard residential property. So bear in mind, the uh, the guru outfit will certainly be trespassing. You you definitely cannot be seen. So the way I decided to do this was just stinking up to the back of him and using the emetic syringe and kind of immediately taking him out as soon as he was under the effect of that. Just make your way down. I mean, you you can do what I've done and scale the the roof and the pipes and everything, or, or you could just go through the the building. And as long as you've timed it right, this guard should be alone and and not being watched by anyone. And the requirement is just that you kill him whilst he's under the effects of the poison, so pretty much as soon as he's poisoned, you can go straight into it. I could have pushed him over the edge. I decide to subdue him, then break his neck. Either works, and hide the body in the long grass. And then job's basically a good one, and I'll fast forward the faffing around to get to the exit oh yeah one thing worth mentioning is that you can uh, you c you don't need to keep the guru outfit on so you may as well take the targets outfit but yes I will now fast forward to the exit and that's stage one done silent assassin rating intact And obviously for completion of just level one, you unlock the unlockables, the outfit, the syringe and the grenade. Moving very swiftly onto level two of the escalation. And what I wanted to do was immediately grab the propane tank from around the back of the sanctuary that you start at. I like that you start in the same location that you finished level one in the same outfit. Makes it feel like a proper continuation. Anyway, so once you, you have the propane flask, which, I mean, yeah, you don't really, it's not essential for this, but I like to carry it around, um, you're going to use the emetic grenade on your first two targets. It's definitely, I'm sure everyone will have figured this out on their own. This is just the sensible thing to do because you've got three targets. You need to get two with the grenade and one with the syringe. So these two are poisoned and will head out of the doors behind you that you just came in through. So I decided to lean cinematically on this railing, but you don't need to do that. So they will go to separate bins to be sick. And you can just bash them over the head, snap their neck, and throw them over the railings here, which even though it doesn't look like a hiding spot really, um, that is that is a hiding spot and the body certainly will not be found. I mean it's debatable whether it would be found anyway if you just left it here, but anyway, if you throw it over these railings after you've snapped their necks, remember to do that of course, um, then no one's going to find the body and that's good. So that's two targets down. Third target is working down here on the on the winery floor. Should have no problem at all sneaking down. There's not many eyes on this spot, even though you would think there would be, what with it being right in the middle of a huge kind of visitor gallery, but whatever. Sneak round the back of him, being careful not to actually be in his line of sight, and stab him with the syringe. Now this is probably the one bit that some of you may have had problems with. I could not readily identify a good place to hide the body. So um, I took a bit of a risk and I put him just in this little nook. And this uh, worked perfectly well for me. Your mileage I suppose might vary. Uh, but I can't really see why anyone would be checking here. Um, 
you know, I, I tried dragging him round the sides of these vats, and uh, there people do tend to see him, actually. So I think the place I stored the body there is, is probably one of your better bets. But anyway, so obviously that's all three targets down, and you are now in a position to make your way to the exit. And that's, again, straightforward enough. No problems doing that. So that's level two complete, silent assassin rating intact. So now on to level three and just to recap, although you'll already be well aware, what we need to do, the plan here, is that we need to take out five people this time whilst they are under the effects of the emetic poison. And we need to stay in our outfit as the guru. We can knock out other NPCs, but for the purposes of retaining our silent assassin rating, we are going to certainly aim not to kill any other NPCs or be seen by any other NPCs. So here we have come all this way out from the spawn location to get this crowbar. You do need a crowbar, I think, for, for, for the route I took. Um, a crowbar is essential. So we've come all this way for want of a crowbar. And that means that we can crowbar open this door, which is just next to the spawn. So we've come almost back to where we started. Here we're going to chuck the crowbar so as to distract this guard, go in and immediately we can grab another crowbar, so where once there was a lack of crowbars, suddenly there is an embarrassment of crowbars. Um, and the guard who was distracted by our first crowbar we can knock out with our second crowbar. In here there are a couple of guards who very kindly keep their back to you so you don't need to worry too much as you drag this body in to hide it in one of the cupboards even though it's on the wall that those two guards are looking at so you know they don't have good peripheral vision I suppose pick up everything here make your way past the two guards at that rail crowbar open the power cage And what we're going to do is we're going to use the power to draw one of these two poor guards over here. So turn the power off and one of them will come and investigate the distraction. A lot of this third level is about just setting up the area and setting up the kill uh, of the five people, so five kills. Turn the power back on so no one's going to come over here yet and knock out the other guard. So these two guards, once they're both out, we can hide their bodies. As is a common feature of my uh, Hitman guides these days, I don't think you necessarily need to be hiding these bodies all the time for a silent assassin rating. You could absolutely take a view that unless you do something wrong someone's not going to come along this area but you know better safe than sorry it would be really annoying if if you went to all this effort and then you know failed to get a silent assassin rating just because one of the bodies happened to be seen so we've turned the sprinklers on there with the power on which causes an electrical hazard on the floor in that room that is very important that is key it's easy to miss there where I did it, but remember to turn on the sprinklers as you leave that room and, and have the power on as well to set up the electrical hazard which is going to help us. Here I try and use the emetic grenade because there's two guards in this room who, you know, it can be slightly difficult and awkward to try and take them both out without one of them seeing the other go down, but I failed completely with that grenade, but whatever, um, as it turned out. I was fine with my, you know, very, very useful in this level crowbars. So just a quick one, two on crowbars. And both those guards are out. Hide the bodies. 
these bodies I think it is actually quite important to hide because um, as you'll see in a moment uh, someone does end up coming through this area they don't they wouldn't necessarily see if you just dragged them around the corner but you definitely need to pay attention to these bodies and make sure they're not overly in the way you maybe don't need to be as thorough as I am here though because you'll see I faff around for a minute with the shotgun just trying to work out where I can put it um, anyway You've got the emetic rat poison, and we're going to poison the air filtration system and use that keyboard to basically enable the air filtration system. Um, you haven't yet actually pumped it into anywhere, so um, you need to follow all these steps and more, uh, as I'm about to show you, in order to actually pump that emetic gas into the relevant areas. But yes, I think that's something that people might initially miss when they're trying this third level, is that you don't you, you don't really need to use the grenade and the syringe, even though you are given them and start with them. Um, certainly the best way to do it is to is to use the rat poison and just to poison the air filtration system. So as you'll see, I've yet again made use of the crowbar here to distract one of the guards in the control room. Take him out. You'll see, I, I look left and realise this is actually a bit of a dodgy place to be uh, carrying out the knockout, but whatever, we get away with it. Hide the body. Now this here, I, I mess around for a bit. Um, I you can obviously do this much quicker. I'm fairly confident you don't need to worry about the guard who stands with his back to you watching the TV screens. Um, so you could definitely just go up and jab the guard who's currently taking a drink of coffee or something with the emetic syringe. That would have been the sensible thing to do, but I wait and he walks back to his other position. And then I try and come around the corner and realize that he'll see you if you come around the corner. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I end up just luring, luring him into the middle of the room. And from here, when he eventually does turn his back to you, you can definitely get away with a quick emetic syringe. And that will bring him to you. allow you to take him out in an area where the noise will not draw unwanted attention. You can see I'm, I'm here worried that he might spot me even though he's emetically syringed. Um, pretty sure that never happens right but it, it always makes me nervous. So once he's taken out, hide the body Hide the guns, and just for completeness' sake, I knock this guy out as well. Pretty sure, you, again, probably don't need to actually do that, but whatever. Uh, it might be helpful. I mean, you do make some noise in the area. Right, so then you need to reroute the ventilation so that you are gassing the area with the targets in it. That should be easy enough. And then. I realised that I hadn't yet jimmied open this door, so I do that here. And now we are waiting for the setup that we've worked so long and hard on to actually come to fruition. The electrical hazard that we've set up here is going to be the first thing that kicks in. Um, one thing you need to pay attention to is that not all of the poison targets are going to go into the area that we've set up as the kill space. So one, in my case, I think it, it will probably always only be one, decides to come up these stairs, um, which you do want to be careful of and just make sure that you get him. One silenced round to the head there for him and we leave his body where it fell uh, because I can see that the electrical kills are already starting to take place over in the area that we set up. So that leaves three people now because we got one with the electrical kill and one who came up the other way and these you are all targets so you can kind of go loud obviously you don't want you know bullets 
You wouldn't want to be using an unsuppressed weapon, I don't think. But you can you can be spotted by those guys as you're killing them because it really doesn't matter. So you can go as long as it's a silenced weapon, you can go pretty conspicuous. And you saw me using the submachine gun. I think that's probably one of the only cases I've seen where you can get away with using a a submachine gun and still hope to come away with a silent assassin rating. Anyway, so there we go. You you have now essentially done all the hard work. Uh, as you're coming back out the way you came in, just, just make sure that you remember there's a CCTV camera there. You could go back into the room and just skirt around the back of the two guards inside the dressing room there, or you can just shoot the camera. Uh, unfortunately, as it's you, you have to use an exit that's a fair distance away. You can see here I was hoping I could go back into the exit we've been using for all of the other levels. But no, you need to run all the way across the map. So this just adds kind of needless time to your playthrough. But that's okay because, like I say, from here it really ought to be plain sailing. Um, as you'll see, it there's a minor, minor scare for me. But uh, for everyone else, hopefully... You'll find it straightforward enough. Now, I think uh, when I was recording this, it was actually the first time that I made it through a complete run. So you'll see that I'm a little bit like uh, uncertain where I need to be headed. Um, and you'll see I come here and I realise that I'm going to have to sneak through another area. And I'm kind of like, oh, I really thought I was finished. Um, thankfully, it's not the hardest area to sneak through. But if you are like me then you will find it a little bit challenging because um, I had some misfortune absolutely typically right at the end, right at the death um, so obviously the name of the game here is to pick a, a route that guards aren't going to walk along and spot you as you're making your way through the rows of the vineyard vines and you'll see I get to the end and I hold the button to exit knowing that I only have a limited window because the guards are within view of me and I think you know oh I'll be fine because I can just very quickly exit and and I can't find the button and I'm so nearly spotted that I had to wait here to check that I got a silent assassin rating uh it's all okay I did get the silent assassin rating as hopefully you'll be seeing now um so all's well that ends well a fine escalation, you know, some interesting kind of changes in the requirements level on level. Uh, probably not one of my favourites of the of the deluxe escalations, but, you know, it was fine, it was good. So, thank you so much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. Obviously, I'm a small channel with not many viewers. Uh, if you could like and subscribe, I would love that. Thank you, goodbye.